Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to find the domain of a function. We're not going to talk about the range, because that's too hard, so I'll probably cover it in a separate video. But we're just talking about domain, domain errors, and how to write the domain in interval notation. So let's say I have the function f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. And I ask you, what's the domain of this function? I would say my students do one of two things. Number one, they say, I don't know how to find domain, and they give up immediately. The second group of kids, they'll try and factor this, and maybe they factor this correctly to x minus 3 times x minus 3, and then they say the domain is x equals 3, which is wrong too. None of my students ever give me the correct answer, which is to say that the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And the reason why that's right is because what is domain? Domain is all the possible x values you can plug into this function. If you tell me the domain is x equals 3, then you're telling me only the number 3 will work. And so I can't plug in 2 or 1 or 0 in for x. And to that I say, that's ridiculous. There is no value for x that breaks the function here. So that is to say, the domain, not just for this function, but for all functions is negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, all real numbers, except for domain errors. Now you may be wondering, what are domain errors? Because they kind of sound important. Well, let me tell you, there's six domain errors in the math universe that I know about. In no particular order, number one is a zero in the denominator. This is the most famous example because as we know, you cannot divide by zero. Your calculator will get mad at you. But basically, domain errors are things that are gonna break our calculator, but really they're breaking the function, like zero in the denominator. Number two, you cannot have a negative square root. Now, technically you can when, now technically you can when you consider imaginary numbers, but we're not talking about imaginary numbers today nor will you ever talk about imaginary numbers with domain. So if you have a negative square root, like square root of negative five, that's a problem. The third case you can have domain errors is piecewise functions. Maybe you don't know what these are, but these are the functions that look like this. They have the curly bracket, and they usually have two different functions depending on the range of x value you have. So they look something like this. You can potentially have domain errors here, especially if these numbers don't match up in the conditions. In other words, I put x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 2. So in other words, I covered all the numbers. But let's just say I change this to a positive 4, and now there's a gap between 2 and 4. And a gap means there is a domain error between 2 and 4. But don't worry about that one too much. And also don't worry about the next three I'm going to write either. Number four, you can have a domain error from logarithms. Like for instance, you can't take the, like for instance, you can't take the log of negative numbers or zero. If you don't know what a, if you don't know what a logarithm is, it doesn't matter for this video. Number five, arc trig or inverse trig. In other words, arc sine, arc cos. In other words, arc sine, arc cosine. They have domain errors, like you need to be between negative one and positive one. But again, that doesn't matter. And the last one I know of, this is a very weird domain rule that I've never actually seen before. But you cannot, but you cannot, but you cannot raise negative numbers, like negative two, to certain powers. Like for instance, if you plug in this in your calculator, it will throw an error at you for some reason. If you plug this in your calculator, it will throw you an error for some reason. But ironically, if you do this, then it's not an error. And I know there's a reason for it, but that reason doesn't matter because the only two domain errors that we're going to care about today are the first two because these are the only ones that you're going to see in class. So we're going to talk about these two and ignore the other four. And if you don't have a zero in the denominator or a negative square root, then like I said before, your answer is just going to be negative infinity to positive infinity and we don't even need to think about it. But now I do want to just talk about these two scenarios more in depth 
and tell you what you should do for both of them. For the zero in the denominator case, you just want to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. And so what that might look like, if you have the function one over two x minus four, then I am setting the denominator two x minus four equal to zero. Solve for x, this is very easy. I'm assuming you know this by now, but you're gonna get x equals positive two. But remember, we don't want a zero in the denominator. So really the answer is x does not equal two, which you can write your domain like this. However, I'm gonna write it in interval form. Interval form would look like this, parenthesis negative infinity to two, parenthesis union parenthesis two comma infinity. I know this looks very confusing. If you've never done interval notation before, then I'd recommend watching my video on it. But this is a very complicated way of saying include every single number in the known universe except for positive two. And of course, x does not equal two is a lot is a lot easier way to write that, but it's good if you know both ways, so I'm gonna show you both ways. And then for the negative square root case, you basically just wanna make an inequality. I'm not gonna write this in words, I'm just gonna show you. If I have the function square root of x plus six, then all you wanna do is, then all you wanna do is say the thing inside the square root x plus six is greater than or equal to zero. That's all you do. And then you solve, subtract six, x is greater than or equal to negative six, which is the domain in inequality form, and in interval form, that would be negative six comma infinity with a parenthesis around the infinity and a square bracket around the negative six because of that equal sign. Just so you know, there are a couple exceptions to this rule that I'm showing you. I'm not gonna be talking about the advanced cases today. We're just gonna be doing some basic problems. And then maybe in the future, I'll make a video with more advanced problems to look at. So I want you to try these on your own now. If you don't know how to solve them, that's fine. I'll show you how to do them in my work. But I do want you to pause the video and try it on your own first. I don't care if you do inequality form or interval form. So find the domain of this function. Go ahead, give it a try. And here's the solution. As you can see, this is the zero in the denominator case. I know there's no zeros in the denominator, but Whenever you have a denominator, we need to set that denominator equal to zero, like I said we should. And now some of my students, they'll subtract six from both sides, and I just, oh, I don't know what to do with these students. But the short answer is no. Whenever you have x squared, it means you have to factor, or at least try to factor. And then at this point, only 50% of my students know how to factor. So if you don't know how, watch my other video on factoring. But basically, the factors of six are one and six, or two and three. And since this is positive, and also it's positive five, it means the numbers need to add up to positive five, which is why two and three is correct. Six and one is not correct, because six minus one, I just said it needs to be positive. Six minus one's negative, so don't do that. So we get x plus two times x plus three equals zero. And then don't forget the solution is always the opposite. So in other words, negative two and negative three. Now, if you wanna write this in inequality form, I would write x does not equal negative two or negative three. Or if you wanna write this in interval form, this is very fun. It is parenthesis negative infinity comma negative three parenthesis union negative three comma negative two parenthesis union negative two comma infinity and i can understand why you don't like that but you're gonna have to learn eventually so this is how you do it you'll notice from the last two examples we did there's a pattern emerging that hopefully you can see and one more quick thing you have to put the negative three first that is not optional because we always go from lowest to highest and negative three is lower than negative two so again, either of these answers are correct. And let's move on to the second one I have for you. For this one, we have 17x minus four divided by x squared plus one. This one I do not want you to try on your own because there is a trick element to this one. 
But first, I ignore the numerator. The only thing I need to worry about is the denominator, and I set it equal to zero. You can try factoring this, but it's not gonna work. Also, because we don't have any x terms in the middle, like the last one had plus five x, this one doesn't have any x terms in the middle, which means there's another way I can solve this, which is perfectly okay. Subtract one from both sides, x squared equals negative one, take the square root of both sides. Oh wait, I can't take the square root of negative numbers. So in other words, there is no solutions for x for when this equals zero. Now normally we think of no solutions as being bad, but the reason why this is good is because my denominator is never going to equal zero. So in other words, the answer is x can be all real numbers, which is how I'd write it in inequality form. I know that's not an inequality, but whatever. And then if you wanna write it in interval form, it is negative infinity comma positive infinity. Both these answers are correct. So that's what happens when you get no solution in your denominator. It looks like this. So that was kind of a trick question. Let's see if you can get this next one. Number three, the square root of five X plus nine. Obviously this is gonna use my square root rule that I told you about. And as another hint, you will get a fraction as your final answer. So go ahead, give this one a try. Okay, and here is the solution. First, like I said before, I just need to take this thing and say it needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So then I subtract nine from both sides. So five X is greater than or equal to negative nine. And then we just divide by five. And this is our answer. X is greater than or equal to negative nine fifths. Or if you prefer that as a decimal, negative 1.8, but I don't like decimals. In interval form, that is negative nine fifths with a square bracket, comma, infinity, comma, infinity, parentheses. And that is my answer for that one. By the way, what this basically means, if I plug in a number less than negative nine fifths, such as negative 10, and I plug in negative 10 in for x right there, that's gonna be the square root of negative 41 in that case, which I can't take the square root of negative numbers. But if I plug in something for x that's greater than negative nine fifths, such as negative one, that would get me the square root of positive four, which we know what that square root is, it's two. But the more important thing is that I can take the square root of it. It's not gonna cause an error in my calculator. And one more quick quiz question for you. Can I take the square root of zero? Yes, the answer is zero. But as soon as I plug in square root of negative 0 0.0001, that's a problem, that's illegal. So anyways, this is the answer to number three. And now I have two more for us today. It's the square root of x divided by x minus two. I wanna give you a hint for this one. This one has two different domains and we kind of have to combine them in a certain way. So I, so still give this a try. So still give this a try on your own. Find the two different domains and then I'll help you stitch them together. Okay, so first it doesn't matter if we start with the square root rule or with the zero in the denominator rule. I mean, certainly the zero in the denominator is easier because x minus two equals zero. Just add two to both sides, x equals two. But remember it's x cannot be two because we cannot have a zero in the denominator. That's the first domain. The second domain, comes, the second domain comes from the square root of x. Remember, I just have to take the thing under the square root and say it's greater than or equal to zero. It almost seems like a trick question here, but you don't have to do anything to it, you're done. So these are my two individual domains, and now we need to talk about how to combine them. To help you visualize this, I'm gonna draw a number line of this scenario. And the two points I'm interested in here are zero and positive two, and I don't really care about the rest. But for x does not equal two, the easiest way to represent that on a number line is with an open circle, because open circle means do not include that number, so don't include two. For x is greater than or equal to zero, that would look like this with a closed circle on zero, and then an arrow pointing to the right like that. And so the reason why I'm showing you this number line is because I'm telling you, I can plug in x equals zero, positive one, 
Can't plug in two, but I can do positive three. I can even do decimals or fractions if I want, but this is what my interval looks like. And then if I wanna write this in interval notation, then I would say zero comma two, and notice square bracket on the zero, because I can be zero, but I cannot be two, so that's why I guess the parenthesis, union with two to positive infinity. Again, the two gets parentheses because I can't include it. And again, this is how I'd write it in interval notation. And by the way, let's say hypothetically, instead of positive two, we got x cannot be negative two, so like the negative two over here and now positive two is like not special at all, it's just like a, a normal number, then my domain would just be x is greater than or equal to zero. The negative two doesn't even matter because it's out of the bounds for my other domain anyway, the greater than zero one. And so if this was the case, then the answer would be zero comma infinity. Negative two wouldn't even matter to me. That's kind of advanced, so if you don't understand that, that's okay. It takes practice to get really good at it. But the last and final example I have for you is in the numerator, square root of eight minus two x, and in the denominator, the square root of x plus one. Two hints for you. Yes, this will be two different domains that we have to stitch together somehow, and you have to figure it out. The second hint I have for you is that the denominator also has a square root. When you have that case, a square root in the denominator, you still say x plus one greater than zero, but you don't say greater than or equal to zero, you just say greater than. Because this way, I don't even need to do the x plus one equals zero and x cannot equal negative one. I don't even need to do that. Just doing this is gonna cover it and I'll be good with that inequality. So go ahead, give this one a try. And when you're ready to see the solution, unpause the video. Okay, so first, I already started with the denominator. You should get x is greater than negative one. For the second one in the numerator, we have to say eight minus two x is greater than or equal to zero, because it's in the numerator, it's okay to be equal to. So then I would subtract eight from both sides, negative two x greater than or equal to negative eight. Now one thing you may have forgotten, when you divide by negative numbers, you need to flip the sign of your inequality. So that means x is actually less than or equal to positive four. And if you miss that, you're gonna get the wrong answer. So in other words, x has to be less than or equal to four and x has to be greater than negative one. So how do I combine these? Well, my advice to you would be to make a number line again and just draw them one at a time. So for x is less than or equal to four, less than means left. So everything left of positive four is gonna be good. And then for the other one, x is greater than negative one, open circle on negative one, and greater than means to the right. And so in order for the domain to be correct, we need the region where these two overlap, which is gonna be negative one to positive four. There's two ways you can write this. One, in inequality form, negative one less than x less than or equal to positive four. I call this like a sandwich. And then in interval form, it is parenthesis negative one comma positive four square bracket. Again, both of these would be correct. If you had it written as two different statements like this and this, I would say that's wrong or in the very least, it's not the best answer because we can combine them to be one inequality this time. And so hopefully that makes sense. If not, post your questions in the comment section. Thank you all for watching. My name is Dan the Tutor and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.